Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtam Bhutale Sramate Bhakti Charaswam and Itinamane Snignichet Supaneta Bhagnam Charizal Tom Prabhata Gata Prana Nami Bhakti Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtam Bhutale Sramate Bhakti Vidanta Swam and Itinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shanivadi Paskita De Satarine Reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, found Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Chapter 18. Conclusion. The Perfection of Renunciation. Reading from verse 4. Nishayam Sri Nume Tatra Nishayam Sri Nume Tatra Jage Bharata Satama Jage Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Trivita Samprakitita Nishtayam Sri Nume Tatra Jage Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Nishtayam Sri Nume Tatra Jage Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Nishayam Srinamaitatra Jage Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Nishayam Sri Maitatra Jagai Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Nishayam Sri Maitatra Jake Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Nishayam Srinume Tatra Jake Bharata Satama Jago Hi Purusha Vyagra Trivita Samprakirtita Nishtayam Certain, Certainty Srinu Here May From Me Tatra Therein Chage In the matter of renunciation Bharata Satama O oh, best of the Bharatas Jaga. Jaga, renunciation, renunciation. He, he, certainly, certainly. Purusha, Vyagra. Purusha Vyagra, O tiger among human beings, tiger among human beings. Trivida, of three kinds, of three kinds. Samprakitita, Samprakitita, is declared. Translation, O best of the Bharatas, now hear my judgment about renunciation. O tiger among men, renunciation is declared in the scriptures to be of three kinds. You want to repeat it? O best of the Bharatas, now hear my judgment about renunciation. O tiger among men, renunciation is declared in the scriptures to be of three kinds. 
purport. Although there are differences of opinion about renunciation, here the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, gives his judgment, which should be taken as final. After all, the Vedas are different laws given by the Lord. Here, the Lord is personally present, and his word should be taken as final. The Lord says that the process of renunciation should be considered in terms of the modes of material nature in which they are performed. The Lord says that the process of renunciation should be considered in terms of the modes of material nature in which they are performed. Om Ajnana Timanda Shakyana Anjala Shalakaya Chakchula Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the deepest darkness of ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Vanchakalpa trubias cha, kripa sandubia evicha, patitanam pa venepio vaishnavavyo namo namaha, jai shi krishna taitanya prabhu nichananda, sri advaita gadata sri vasudhi gora bhakta vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this evening, uh, I will. The first point I want you to make about is about renunciation. Yes. That it's sure that it's going to happen. For sure, it means for sure. The difference between certainty and certainly. I can't explain the difference. There must be some subtle difference, but I can't explain it at the moment. We'd have to get a dictionary. So I wanted to uh, speak about, um, first about Krishna saying, so in, the, in this chapter, the beginning of the chapter, Krishna was saying, the, um, first we had a question by Arjuna. He wants to know about renunciation. So both Tyag and Sanyas are both translated as renunciation. So Arjuna was asking, what's the difference? So then Krishna gave the opinions of uh, different sages, great men, great learned men. And then in uh, three he gave the opinions of some learned men declare this, and other sages say that, and now he's going to give his opinion. So this is the, I suppose you could call the prelude to his opinion, which he's going to tell in verses 7 to 12. He's going to tell about renunciation in the different modes. So we'll be speaking about that during the next few days. One, um, in the first line of the, of the verse... For today's verse, it says, Shri Nu Me. Hear from me. Krishna is saying, Hear from me. There are so many different people with so many opinions, depending on which newspaper you read. Or When I was young, I, I thought that if it was in the newspaper, that it must be true. And if it was on television, it was definitely true. But now, then I, now I think differently. So there are so many opinions, and Krishna is saying, Hear from me. So he says this quite often. He says it 10 times, 10, 12 times, 13 times throughout the Bhagavad Gita. And the most famous one is 7.1. The verse 7.1 is um, famous for this Sri Nume. Let me see what Krishna says in 7.1. So this is the verse that uh, Prabhupada, there are 20 recorded lectures on this verse by Srila Prabhupada, 7.1. Let me see what Prabhupada says in the poem. So in the verse, Krishna is saying, um, the Supreme Personality of God had said, Now hear, O son of Prita, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. And in the poem, Prabhupada is talking about these words, hear from me. 
so it's a long poem about mm. just after the in the purple just after the quoted verses there are five verses quoted from Bhagavatam just after this So of those five verses, the first one is Srimatam Swakata Krishna Purnusravana Ketana Ritjanta Stayabhajani Vidanoti Sritsutam and then the next one you probably know. Nasta Prayeshu Abhitreshu Nitcham Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yutama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Who, question time, who is the most famous person for um, hearing? Hearing, listening, hearing. Yes, Pariksit Maharaj because he heard the, the Bhagavad Gita. So after this quote, Prabhupada says, Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Um, the Lord therefore says to Arjuna, Touch, renew, hear from me. No one can be a greater authority than Krishna. And therefore, this is um, just before Srimatam. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six lines up, seven lines up. No one can be a greater authority than Krishna, and therefore, by hearing from him, one receives the greatest opportunity to become a perfectly Krishna conscious person. Would you like that? <laughs> Ladies, would you like to be a perfectly Krishna conscious person? One has therefore to learn from Krishna directly or from a pure devotee of Krishna and not from a non-devotee upstart puffed up by academic education. So what does Krishna say? So, okay, we listen to Krishna. The... Uh, of the nine processes of devotional service, the first one is hearing. Hearing. Sravanam Ketanam, Vishnu. Hearing and chanting about Krishna. So, what does Krishna say? 7.7. .7. What does Krishna say in 7.7? .7? Let's have a look. Oh, you don't have a book. You have a book? 7.7. .7. 7. Very nice verse. Matapara Taram Nanyat Kinchi Dasti Tananjaya May Sarva Midam Protam Sutre Mani Ganaiva O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. Krishna says that he is the supreme authority. And that's why we listen to him. I just want you to mention a couple of other things that Krishna says. Example, um, about the mind. What does Krishna say about the mind? 636. Arjuna is complaining, oh, my mind is like more difficult to control than the wind. What does Krishna say? Six thirty-six. Oh, he's, now is Krishna is giving his opinion. Krishna is giving his opinion. That is my opinion. Yes. For one whose mind is unbridled, if you have a horse, you put a bridle on him, that the ropes that you put on a horse, not the ropes, the, the bands that you put on a horse's head, and these ropes, they're called a bridle. So if you have that on a horse, you can control him by pulling on the ropes or the reams a certain way. You can control the horse. 
So if you have a mind, if you fix it up with a, a harness that's bridled, that's a, as far as I understand it. For one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is difficult work. But he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success. That is my opinion. Now Krishna gives his opinion again at the end of the chapter. Last uh, verse of chapter 6 is Krishna's opinion. This is one of the verses you have to learn for Bhakti Shastri. 647. At the top of the page, there are numbers in the middle. 647. Yoginam apisarvesham yukta And of all yogis, the one with great faith, who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. So right now there are some devotees on the altar in intimate, trans- um, intimately united with Krishna in transcendental loving service. They're touching his feet, they're changing his clothes. That was what I wanted to say about Krishna's opinion. I just wanted to mention something about what we're supposed to pre- renounce. In, if we jump ahead to 18.11, this is a sneak preview of this week's coming attractions. 18.11. It is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities, but he who renounces the fruits of action is called one who has truly renounced. And then in uh, 6.1, he also talks about renunciation. 6.1. This is called Dhyana Yoga. The Supreme Personality of God had said, one who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life. And he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no duty. So it's not that we have to renounce work. We have to renounce the attachment to the fruits. So next, I wanted to mention four examples of listening to Krishna from Krishna book. We'll start off with the gopis in the Rasa dance introduction. So what they're hearing is the flute of Krishna. The gopis are at home and they're hearing the flute of Krishna. Immediately upon hearing the vibration of the flute, they all left their respective engagements and proceeded to the spot where Krishna was standing. While they ran, very swiftly their earrings swung back and forth. They rushed towards the place known as Vamsivat. So, as soon as they hear the flute, they all run to Krishna. And not only the people, but also the animals are mm, mm, attracted by Krishna's flute.
I just read a little bit first. Krishna had many thousands of cows, and they were divided into groups according to their colors. They were also differently named according to color. When he, Krishna, would prepare to return from the pasturing ground, he would gather all the cows. As Vaishnavas count 108 beads, which represent the 108 individual gopis, so Krishna would also count 108 beads to count the different groups of cows. In this chapter, it's called Gopi's Feelings of Separation. So they're, they're, the gopis are speaking. Another gopi told Mother Yashoda, My dear mother, when your son returns home, he decorates himself with the buds of the kunda flower just to enlighten and gladden his friend. And just to enlighten and gladden his friends, he blows his flute. The breeze blowing from the south creates a pleasing atmosphere because it is fragrant and very cool. Minor demigods, like the Gandhavas and Siddhas, take advantage of this atmosphere and offer prayers to your son by sounding their bugles and drums. Krishna is very kind to the inhabitants of Rajabhumi, Vrindavan, and when he returns with his cows and friends, he is remembered as the lifter of Govardhan Hill. Taking advantage of this opportunity, the most exalted demigods, like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, come down to offer their evening prayers. And they accompany the cowherd boys in glorifying the qualities of Krishna. And now about the deer. When Krishna returns, he is garlanded with tulsi leaves. A gopi described him to a friend. He puts his hand on the shoulder of a cowherd boyfriend and begins to blow his transcendental flute. The wives of the black deer become enchanted upon hearing the vibration of his flute, which resembles the vibration of the veena. The deer come to Krishna and they become so charmed that they stand still, forgetting their homes and husbands. And the deer have husbands. Like us, they are enchanted by the ocean of transcendental qualities of Krishna, and the she-deer become enchanted by the vibration of his flute. And next, the peacocks. What are they listening? They are also listening to Krishna. Another gopi. This is called the gopis attracted by the flute. Another gopi spoke thus to her friends about Krishna. Dear friends, our Vrindavan is proclaiming the glories of this entire earth because this planet is glorified by the lotus footprints of the son of Devaki. Besides that, when Govinda plays his flute, the peacocks immediately become mad, as if they had heard the rumbling of a new cloud. When all the animals and trees and plants either on the top of Govardhan Hill or in the valley, see the dancing of the peacocks, they all stand still and listen to the transcendental sound of the flute with great attention. And the last example is the clouds. They're also listening to Krishna play his flute. One gopi said, my dear friends, Krishna and Balaram are nicely dressed with earrings and pearl necklaces. They enjoy themselves on the top of Govardhan Hill and everything becomes absorbed in the transcendental pleasure when Krishna plays on his flute. Charming, the whole created manifestation. When he plays, the clouds stop their loud thundering out of fear of him rather than disturb the vibration of the flute. They respond with mild thunder, and so congratulate Krishna, their friend. So that's all about hearing from Krishna. And the last part, the last thing I wanted to mention is what's in it for us. Okay, supposing I listen to Krishna, what's in it for me? 1876.
The last four verses of the Bhagavad Gita are spoken by Sanjaya. And this is what he says about hearing the Bhagavad Gita. O oh king, as I repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna, I take pleasure being thrilled at every moment. Purport. The understanding of Bhagavad Gita is so transcendental that anyone who becomes conversant with the topics of Arjuna and Krishna becomes righteous and he cannot forget such talks. This is the transcendental position of spiritual life. In other words, one who hears the Gita from the right source, directly from Krishna, attains full Krishna consciousness. The result of Krishna consciousness is that one becomes increasingly enlightened and he enjoys life with a thrill, not only for some time, but at every moment. So is that what you want? Thank you very much. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Any questions? Yes? Sorry? Um, yeah, that's the record that I know of. There, um, Srila Prabhupada uh, uh, spoke often on uh, the verse uh, 7.1, and there are 20 different recordings. So he, he may have given others, but that's the one that you can look. If you look on the database, there are 20 recordings of 7.1. Srinume? Sri Nume and uh, yeah, Tat Sri Nu, yes. In the Bhagavad Gita, yeah, do you want to know where? Sri Nu. Sri Nu, he, sa he says, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can uh, search it on the database. I'm not sure whether I typed in here or listen or should we know because some yeah they're the ones I found Madhu Gopal suggesting they make a page on the Vanipedia about Srinume My girl was explaining how Krishna is inconceivably humble and if you look at um, 1864, Krishna is giving his supreme instruction and he's not even saying you must, he's saying hear this from me because it is for your benefit. Mm -hmm. Then he gives his final instruction which is Manmana bhava matbhakta machachi mam namaskuru mame vaisyasi satcham te prachijane priyosime he asking us to do four things. 
always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage to me. That means obeisances. Thus, you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. That's the last thing Krishna is saying. I hear this from me. It's for your benefit. For your benefit. Not because he wants or anything. For your benefit. Yes? It's 934. It's the last verse of chapter 9. See, chapter, uh, the book's finished in 17 chapters, and then 18 is a kind of recap, I suppose you could call it in modern language, summary, uh, conclusion. So he's going over some of the things again, and literally he's repeating this verse from 934 in 1865. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.